Hey guys. So, day three of on-ramp. Um, this is a fun day. So, uh, day three is where we combine elements of the squat and the deadlift together and show them how that applies to compound dynamic lifts. Um, our main compound dynamic lifts um, are the snatch and the clean jerk. Um, so, uh, but day three, you know, first we want to review and warm up. Okay, so perfect way to do that. Let's review the squat and the deadlift. Um, you know, keep drilling into their minds the points of performance of our two, you know, super important movement patterns. So I review the squat, balanced foot, hips dropping back and down, knees aligning over the toes, chest staying, uh, chest staying up, or whatever position they have to be in for their spine to stay neutral in the squat. All right. After you do that, bring Sally up. Off, awesome warm up, and I also like to reinforce that. Um, you know, we have fun. We have fun with fitness. We mix it up. Okay. Sometimes we try to keep up with the song. It's great. And you know how hard it is. Um, then, okay. So after they're done squatting, now we get to review the deadlift. Um, and so I like to review the kettlebell deadlifts. Again, it's a nice compliment because it distinguishes the squat and the deadlift movement pattern. Okay. Which I think is pretty important. So hinging at the hips. Um, engaging the hamstrings and the glutes, bracing through your core, and squeezing your butt. Okay, so uh, review those points of performance, then do a Tabata with kettlebell deadlifts. Okay, not only does it a uh, good warm up, reinforces that movement pattern, it also shows them what Tabata is. Okay, um, okay. so after you get done with that, it takes about 15 minutes. Um, bring them over to the whiteboard and let's do a whiteboard lecture. Okay. So the whiteboard lecture uh, today was, is for the snatch. Okay. So points of performance of the snatch, it's any movement that goes ground to overhead and in, in one fluid move. Um, I like to reinforce that, you know, you can do a snatch with anything. You can do a dumbbell snatch. You can do a kettlebell snatch. You can do a barbell snatch. You can do a med ball snatch. You can do a slam ball snatch as long as it goes ground to overhead in one movement. Okay. Um, we also want to cover the hang versus power positions. Um, so I cover those in terms of like, okay, so the starting positions are from the ground and from the hang and the ending positions are in the squat or in the power position. All right. So I just give them like a little whiteboard lecture kind of like that. Okay. So I've outlining what that is and then how to put those terminologies together in different ways, right? Like this is a hang power dumbbell snatch. This is a, kettlebell squat snatch, you know, all those things, you know, just to kind of start to introduce the terminology. From there, I go into reviewing the dumbbell snatch. And I think the key here is giving them a lot of time to feel out these movements. Okay. So points of performance of the dumbbell snatch, you can kind of point out how it's sort of a half squat, half deadlift, um, you know, elements of both movement patterns in there. Um, cue them to jump, cue them for a nice loose, uh, straight arm until the very end. So a nice delayed pull until the dumbbell comes up. You can show them then how to drop under the dumbbell and catch, uh, with a straight arm in a dumbbell power snatch. And like I said, you can spend a lot of time here. Um, uh, as long as you move from one cue to the next sequentially. Okay. Like, all right, do 10 focusing on jumping. Okay. Then give them a break. Now do 10 focusing on reaching full extension, you know, and keeping your arms straight through the, through that extension. Okay. Okay. Now do 10, um, dropping under the, the dumbbell, you know, to catch that kind of thing. People will appreciate um, taking a lot of time here. All right. A new movement for today after you get done with the dumbbell snatch, the hanging knee raise. Okay. This is our introduction to sort of bar work, um, introducing the active shoulder hang, introducing, um, you know, a slight kip swing, um, you know, and it previews, you know, toes to bar. It previews pull-ups and other, other bar work, knees to elbow, that type of stuff. And then at the end, we are going to do a 10 minute AMRAP 
with eight hanging knee raises, 10 dumbbell snatches, and a 12 calorie row. So again, we're bringing back the row. Um, it's a nice review. Kind of shows them how you work it in to, in different ways and different workouts. Um, it's also familiar, with, familiar for them now because we've done it in day one and day two. So they go, oh, okay, we've got eight hanging knee raises. That's our new movement. We practice that. We've got 10 dumbbell snatch. We can practice that. And then we can do a familiar movement at the end with the 12 calorie row. And that is day three. At the end, we always want to give them the option to continue with one-on-one -on -one training um, or move into group classes. Um, you know, the benefits of continuing one-to-one -one training is we can maybe really cover all of CrossFit um, with additional time. You know, in three days, three hours, we're not going to cover all CrossFit. Um, and that's okay. You know, as long as we, you know, show them... Uh, you know, the squat, the deadlift, basic movement patterns, they get to know where they are in their fitness. Um, they start hearing the language a little bit more. They start understanding the flow of the day, warm up, technique, workout, intensity. They start to understand those kinds of stuff. We're setting them up for success um, in the group classes. Um, so yeah, so that's day three. If we had a couple more days, lots of stuff we could cover, um, you know, box jumps, running, um, push press, front squats, overhead squats, clean and jerks. Um, so there's, there's definitely room for room for more. Alrighty. Thanks guys.